All right, everybody, welcome back to another video where we're gonna talk about the fencing types and styles that go into making a minor league baseball field run. So today we've got Aaron, who is the VP of Stadium Operations here at Hammond's Field. Yeah. I appreciate you giving us your time, being so free good. with it. Yeah. So Aaron, what I wanna talk about in this video is a style or subsection of fencing that uh, a lot of fence guys are getting into because you're starting to see it more in sports stadiums yeah. and really just fencing in general. Uh, it might be hard for you guys to see it at home, but what, we're, what, what we want to talk about is the gigantic net that is basically the, the line of defense from whatever's going on in the field to the spectators. Yes. So we have a 32 foot tall, almost from foul pole to foul pole, netting so almost everyone that's ticketed is behind uh, a piece of netting it's proprietary dyneema it's knotless okay and it's about 65 percent less visible if you're behind it and that's that's a, a trademark proprietary make there's only five companies in the world that make netting like this wow so it's kind of hard to get uh in line but we got in line we our first extension was in 2016 Okay. Um, and then we did another extension to 2020 to bring it down to the ends. We just found as uh, cultures change, people's change, people's habits have changed. Sure, sure. Yeah. Um, that net, more and more netting became needed. Yeah. Many, many times a night I say, thank you, net. <laughs> yeah. Um, we do have patrons that complain. They don't want to sure. be behind a net. Sure. But we, we don't have a vertical um, or a horizontal net. We just have verticality. Yeah. Some places have a horizontal as well, so you can't, oh, okay. you can't even get a pop-up. Um, there's really no chance at a free souvenir, kind of a classic sure. baseball item. So we've just gone vertical. You can Players can still toss them yeah. uh, up and over at the end of an inning. People still get plenty of souvenirs. Of course, of course. Well, and I'm sure, I'm sure extending this net was a lengthy conversation yeah. on you know, kind of weighing out patron safety versus, I'm sure, some pretty significant costs yeah. with putting this in. Uh, I mean, I, I think the benefit of it is kind of what we were saying in the beginning that it's hard to it's hard to make out on video just because, like you said, it's proprietary to where it's it blends in, it's easy yeah. to see through. Yeah, that whole thing. I and I would have to think if you kept a tally sheet, I'd have to think that it does more good than harm. It does. Uh, we've had many people who initially didn't like the idea of it, who later said, "I'm really glad you put that up." And you know, ultimately, in, in minor league baseball, fan experience is number one. Sure. It, um, you know, from getting in to the type of food, quality of food, the in-game in, in in experience, product on the field, the quality of the field, and everything you see for three and a half hours, uh, when they leave, everything has to be top, you know, top notch for patron safety. Sure. You can't have fun if you don't feel safe. This helps with that. Well, and it's an interesting point you made in the beginning that times are changing where people's attention uh, might be less on the field and more on a mobile device. Yeah. So I could see this being huge. So it really we're concerned with uh, foul balls yeah. probably, but also we had talked a little bit before broken bats, j really just any sort of uh, debris coming off the field. Yeah. What, what size is this net? Uh, inch and a quarter by inch and a quarter. Okay. I don't know. I don't remember the gauge, to be honest sure. with you. Sure, sure, sure. But, I mean, the point being, it's going to stop anything more than a couple inches Absolutely. in diameter yep. from getting through here. Yep. But still also, you know, the guest experience is paramount. Yep. So you still want, you know, someone in the front row to be able to experience the game yep. like yep. they would have 20 years ago. Yeah, tr traditional netting systems often, uh, they use the structure of the stadium to support. Yeah. Yeah. We had to set in 55 foot tall poles on each end okay. so we could have true verticality. So what that means is in ice storms, we don't have to take it down. Oh, nice. Because there's no pitch to it. There's okay. no snow load, no ice load. So it, we invested even more than we might have had to. Sure. So we could keep it up year round. Um, well, that probably also goes to guest experience too, that there isn't a lot of vertical structure yeah. around the netting to hold it up. Our old system on front row, it, it kind of pitched back towards you a little bit. And yeah. as you'd walk on the front row, it's rubbing on you all the time. Yep. It just makes the area feel small. Of course. So going straight up really helped us out. So let's talk about maintenance and upkeep. Is it a product that you put it up and it just stays up indefinitely? No, netting always grows. Okay. It, number one rule, netting will get bigger and bigger and bigger forever. 
Interesting. No netting in the world stays the same size. Okay. And so um, if you'll notice, there's no zip ties. Yeah. But maybe one every five, six feet. Zip ties sure. do not like hot, cold, hot, cold. That makes so sense. So if you're hanging anything with zip ties, it's very temporary. You get brittle over so time. So we do uh, an oil wrapped nautical um, netting okay. uh, and rope to do the fastening. Once a year, we get a lift and we check everything. Oh, no kidding. So every fitting, tighten. We also have egress points, ingress points, mm -hmm. moving parts, so we check all of that. The netting itself is about a seven to 10 year shelf life. Okay, okay. So we, do, we actually set up um, uh, pitching machines and dial it in as fast as they'll go and, and just to check it every so often. Very good, okay. So as a fan sitting back here, you can kind of take some solace with that knowing that yeah. Uh, you guys are every year making sure yeah. all the fasteners are yeah. exactly to spec. Absolutely. Very good. So you say seven to eight years, and is yeah. it a full replacement at that point? Well, the good news is because we added in 2016 and then in 20, you know, seven to 10 years from 2016, some of it will be due to be replaced. Okay. And then the rest, seven to 10 years after 2020, which helps gotcha. us budget wise offset of the cost. Um, but yeah, yeah, we're still good for a few years and we get it tested every year. And actually when you buy a system like this, um, oftentimes uh, you base, if, if you can provide the lift, uh, the company will pass through and do the inspection for you. Oh, very good. So oftentimes okay. we pair it up with the lift on site already. Sure. They're passing through, they, you know, they spend a day going up and checking everything, tightening, and then we're good to go. So on the replacement every seven to eight years, what? What kind of time frame does that look like to taking the net down and replacing it? Well, we, we'd have everything done the year prior. Okay. So all the conversations, all the purchasing documents, all of that would be done you know, well before. Gotcha. And with us playing college baseball here and minor league baseball, our window is pretty short. Yeah. We'd hate to do it in the fall and just let six months weather on it. Sure. So we usually squeeze it in in a week break in between college and, and pro. Okay. It's tight. So so yeah, so you can replace a section of it. Like you said, this was done kind of in sections yep. uh, in about a week. Yeah. No kidding. Yeah. So what, what are we missing on this? What haven't we talked about as far as the netting goes? The need for more netting, Major League Baseball drove. Sure. Um, it, it wasn't that there was any club out there saying, we need more netting, we need more netting. It, it was an MLB thing. Yep. And we follow their lead. We follow their suggestions. St. Louis, we are way beyond the scope of what's required. Yep. We, we went way above and beyond height and width as you go left and right, you know, yep. down right field line, left field line. So, and that's just, you know, the Cardinals putting patrons first, investing in their patrons. Very good, very good. Well, Aaron, I appreciate your time. Yeah. And I appreciate you, you informing me and educating me a bit yeah. more on the netting. Yeah. All right, guys, so that concludes another video on what fence makes a baseball stadium tick. What did I miss? What haven't I covered yet? Let me know in the comments below. I'd love to hear from you guys. Also, another reminder, be sure to like the video, subscribe to the channel, and hit that notification bell. Those are three of the top ways you can help me support the channel, and it's totally free on your end. Until next time, I'm Joe Everest, the fence expert, reminding you that good fences make good neighbors. I'll see you at the ballgame.